Welcome to lecture 2.7, Advanced Mixing Problems. So last time we did an example of a basic mixing problem. We had a tank of fresh water. Um, we had salt water coming in at some constant rate. The water in the tank is fully mixed, and water was draining out of the tank at the same rate. And we asked, what is the concentration or the amount of salt in the tank at time t? This time, I want to ask, what if? Let's make this more complicated. So what if the incoming and outgoing rates are different? Or what if there are two tanks and one drains into the other? So as before, you can think of these tanks as maybe they're not tanks. Maybe they are, are lakes and there are rivers coming in and out of the lakes. Maybe um, instead of a tank, it represents your, your bloodstream and you have some drug injection that is coming in and the rate out represents the fact that the drug is breaking down or being used up by the body at some other rate. Okay, so let's do an example with real numbers. And this is going to be just like the problem from the last lecture, except the rate out is going to be different from the rate in. So we start with fresh water, 150 gallons. Salt water flows in at 3 gallons per minute. And here's the concentration, same as last time. The water in the tank is fully mixed, but now it drains from the tank at one gallon per minute. And I want to ask the same question. What is the concentration or the amount of salt the moment it overflows? So first step, just as before, x of t is always going to be the number of ounces, is, is the amount of salt in the tank at time t. Then we will write a differential equation of this form. We say that x prime is the rate in minus the rate out. And this is not the rate of water, this is the rate of, of salt. So let's write down what, what this is. So the rate in is, so I always, again, I always do the volume rate times the concentration. So that, that is 3 gallons per minute coming in. And the concentration is 2 ounces per gallon. Ah, I shouldn't write that. Let me erase that. The parentheses should go around the 2. 2 ounces per gallon. And then the rate out. is, again, the volume rate times the concentration. So that's going to be 1 gallon per minute. And then what's the concentration? The concentration is x of t ounces of salt. And what's the volume? Well, now the volume is no longer a constant 150. It's 150 but well, what happens? Let's, let's see. So the volume at time t is, well, you start with 150 gallons at time z zero, and then you are losing two gallons per minute. Because, no, sorry, you are gaining two gallons per minute. So you have three gallons per minute coming in and one gallon per minute coming out. So it's 150 plus two T. That's the volume. So let me write that down. 150 plus 2t gallons. And both of these, let's reduce this. This is 6. Um, as before, the, the gallons cancel, and we get 6 ounces per minute. And down here, we get, let's see what we get. We get x over... 150 plus 2t gallons cancel and ounces per minute. So the differential equation, actually we're going to add an initial condition, so I'm going to write this as the initial value problem that we get, is going to be x prime 
equals 6 minus 1 for 150 plus 2t x. So that's the differential equation. And we also know that we start with fresh water, which means that x of 0, at time 0, we have no salt in the tank because we have fresh water. So this is the initial value problem that we wish to solve. This is a little more complicated than the previous one. Remember the previous problem. We had no t down here. This was just 1 over 150. And so what we got is we got one of those decay to a value problems that was like um, Newton's law of cooling or falling objects with air resistance. So the first thing we are going to do is solve this equation. And then we'll, we'll say a few more things about it. Okay, so I'm going to write this equation up here. And we need to solve. I'm going to write in standard form too. So x prime plus 1 over 150 plus 2t x equals 6. So th this is what we need to solve. Now, let's think about what methods we can use. We can use, we're not going to be able to separate variables. You're welcome to try, but we have a t and an x here, and we won't be able to get those apart because we also have this inhomogeneous term. Um, so let's use the integrating factor method or variation of parameters. Either one of those is going to work. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see which one do I want to use first. Um, oh, let me. Yeah, let me, let me give the variation of parameters. I was going to do, use the integrating factor, and if I did, let me get you started. Recall the integrating factor. We circle a coefficient, and that's e to the integral of this guy, 150 plus 2t. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use variation of parameters instead. And the reason is because the first step a variation of parameters is solving the homogeneous equation. And that's also the first step in our shortcut that I called undetermined coefficients. Remember, homogeneous plus particular solution. So let's, let's solve the homogeneous equation along the way. And if we happen to see a shortcut, or if we happen to be able to spot a particular solution, then we've already done the work and we don't have to do that last step. Okay, so um, actually let, let me just sketch this picture that we have. So, so we have this tank that has 150 plus 2t. This is the volume. So, so the volume of t is 150 plus 2t. I should say that. That will probably be useful later. Um, we, have, we have water coming in at 3 gallons per minute, and it's 2 ounces per gallon, and then we have water leaving at 1 gallon per minute. Okay, so that's, it's always nice to have a picture to look at. So let's, let's do the variation of parameters method. Again, if you want to use integrating factor, you can pause the lecture and do that now for practice. But so let's use variation of parameters. So to do this, we need to solve the homogeneous equation. So let's solve the homogeneous equation. So that is going to be dx dt equals negative 1 over 150 plus 2t x, right? And so we can solve this using separation of variables. So I'm going to so I'm gonna write this as dx over x equals negative 1 over 150 plus 2t dt. So let's integrate both sides. 
And now remember, I always like to factor out whatever this coefficient of the 2 is. Otherwise, we have to do a u substitution. So I'm going to write this as, let's see, so negative 1 half times the integral of 1 over 75 plus t dt. So this is the natural log of x. And the right-hand side here, this is negative 1 half times the natural log of 75 plus t. And then we need a constant of integration, right? OK, so from here, what do we do? Let's exponentiate both sides. So let's put an e here, and let's put an e here. And then here on the left, we have x of t equals c e to the minus 1 half natural log of 75 plus t. And again, I, I did my little bit of a shortcut where, where I, um, I brought the c down in front of here. And because of that, I can ignore the absolute value sign here. OK, so now, now we have to be careful. Now how, how does this e? So we know that e and natural log cancel, right? We, but we got to be really careful of how, because there's this pesky negative one half here. So let's, now we can do anything we want if it's true. Remember that, that's, that's gonna be useful. So I'm gonna rewrite this as c times e to the natural log of 75 plus t. My plus looks like a t, and I think that's, that's okay. And, but now I'm going to raise this whole thing to the negative one half. And no matter how far you get in math, you still mess up exponent law. So I, to this day, always check and make sure I did that correctly because it's easier to go backwards. Let's see. Is e to this, e to the, this guy raised to the, that guy, is, that's e to this times this, and yes, that is what we have here, okay? Now, we can say that these things are going to cancel. So now, I'm going to write this as, oh, let's get my pen back, as C times 75 plus T the negative one half. And that, that's one half is square root and negative is reciprocal. So that means that x of t equals, um, let's make sure that I do this correctly. So that's, so this is c over the square root of absolute value 75 plus t. I'm going to omit the absolute value because t, we're assuming, is starting at time equals zero just because of this word problem. So I'm going to write it like this. And this, I should say, this, this is the homogeneous solution. So I'm, I'm going to write the, the h here. Um, okay. So that is our homogeneous solution. And what's the next step? using the variation of parameters method. The next step is to assume that, so step, well, there's actually, at this point, we can use variation of parameters. We can assume that x, of, that the actual solution is the homogeneous solution times v of t and solve for v and then and then we can uh, solve for v or we can 
try to find a particular solution. And then if we find a particular solution, we can say that x of t is the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. Now almost every textbook is going to have you or is going to think you're going to is going to teach you to do variation of parameters or integrating factor method, but I claim that it's actually easy with a little bit of, of clever thought. This method is much easier because remember this this method you got to take derivatives, you got to plug back in, you got to make things cancel and so forth. But at this method, if we can find a particular solution, we're done. Right? So let's let's think about this situation and see is there going to be a particular solution? So is there a constant solution? That's the first thing to, to ask yourself. And it's not too hard to see that we have salt we have water draining and we have water coming in at a much faster rate with salt. So the amount of salt in the tank is just going to accumulate and get bigger and bigger. It's, um, well, I mean, we're assuming that the tank doesn't ever overflow, so it's like infinite volume. So there's not going to be a steady state solution, but this is similar to what we did in the last problem. Is there something that is almost a steady state solution? Or not a st almost steady state, but is there a simple solution? And Let's consider the case where the concentration of the water initially matches the concentration of the water that's coming in. In that case, we can compute in our head how much salt there is going to be in the tank. It's just the volume in the tank, 150 plus 2t, times 2, the concentration. So let's do that. Uh, how do I want to arrange this? So, um, so let's say, so note, if the initial salt in the tank is, if the initial concentration is 300, um, sorry, uh, I'm ahead of myself. If the initial concentration is 2 ounces per gallon, that means there are, is 300 gallons initially. And I know that's not what we have in our initial value problem. But that doesn't matter. We're trying to find the general solution. So for the general solution, we can find any particular solution. So if the initial concentration, back to where we are, if the initial concentration is 2, then, then we have a solution. Well, I should say, then the, the amount of salt in the tank is just um, 2 ounces per gallon the concentration times the volume at time t and that's 2 times 150 plus 2t or 300 plus 4t so using a little bit of clever thought we can skip the hard step well, not the hard, yeah, I guess it's the hard step of the variation of parameters method and the integrating factor method as well. Both of those are going to involve a pretty nasty integral. So now we can say that the general solution is x of t is the homogeneous solution plus, a, plus our particular solution, which is c over square root of 75 plus t plus 300 plus 4t. So sorry that I'm getting a little bit small in here, but I think you can it's still legible. This is our general solution. And this is why it's always good, especially when you have a word problem, to think about, is there a, a simple solution? Is there something that you can uh, recognize in advance? Because that will make solving, finding the, finding the general solution a lot easier. Okay, so let's, let's talk about this solution. Let me, let me write it out again. So 
So to summarize, we have an initial value problem, x prime plus 1 over 150 plus 2tx equals 6, with x of 0 equals 0. And our, our general solution is x of t, I'll write it bigger this time, equals c over 75 plus t plus 300 plus 4t. This is not a, an equation that we've seen before. So this is, again, this is a general solution, meaning that it's a solution to this equation, not in, using this initial condition. So let's use this initial condition. So let's, let's use, use the initial condition to find our, our particular solution, satisfying our situation. So let's plug in x of 0. So plugging x of 0, that gives us c over square root of 75 plus 300 plus 0. And that equals 0. So that means solving for c in this equation gives us c equals negative 300 root 75. So now our final solution this is a different particular solution is x of t equals negative 300 root 75 over 75 plus t plus 300 plus 4t. So this is the particular solution. Oops, let me erase that. This, this is the particular solution that satisfies our initial value problem. So here's our initial value problem. And here is our particular solution. And remember what we use the word particular solution for. That just means some old solution, some specific solution. The one that we found before, that was a particular solution. That was just the only one that we could have ever come up with out of the blue, just by inspection. This, and, and that satisfied the initial value problem of this ODE, and, well, not this, but if, if instead x of 0 was 300. That particular solution would have solved this initial value problem. Okay. So, um, what do I want to say about this? So this is the... Yeah, so this... Hmm, let me see. So th this is the amount of salt at time t, x of t. Um, if we if we want to find the concentration, that's going to be C of t equals, because I think the original problem actually asked for the concentration. I don't remember, though. It's not that important. But concentration is, you should, still should know how to do it, x of t over the volume of t. So... Um, well, you know, I don't think that I want to actually write, well, I'll do this. I'll write it as x of t. And now what was the volume? The volume was 150 plus, ah, plus 2t. Supposed to be a plus there. And, oh, actually, sure, let's, let's, let's figure out what this is. I think things are going to cancel nicely. So this is um, well. Let's see. So this is going to be. Just trying to figure out how to make room for this. 
negative 300 root 75 over, so 150 plus 2t, that is 2 times 75 plus t times, so that's 75 plus t to the first, and this is 75 plus t to the 1 half, so that's going to be 75 plus t to the 3 halves, correct? Plus, and now this, this is 4 times 75 times t, so this is plus, let's see, it's 4 times 75 plus t over this, which is 2 times 75 plus t. And let's simplify this. Oh, this does simplify. Good. So these, these are going to simplify. And so now we have 2. I'm going to write that first. There's our 2. 2 minus 150 root. 75 over 75 plus t to the 3 halves. Okay, this is concentration. And let's make sure this makes sense. We didn't make any math mistakes. So as t goes to infinity, this denominator is going to blow up and get big. So this is going to go away, and the concentration will approach 2. And that's, that's what it should, because remember, our tank, had, our tank had one going in, one gallon going in, three, gall sorry, three, gallons going, three gallons going in, and one gallon going out. Um, and, the and the concentration coming in was, was 2 ounces per gallon. So it makes sense that as time goes to infinity, the concentration of the tank should approach the concentration of the water that's coming in. Now, it turns out that if you graph these things, you know, I look at this and it's not clear at all what this function looks like graphically. Um, or this. Well, this, I should say, approaches too. So, so I went to Wolfram Alpha and I plugged these things in. And if maybe I was a little better at technology, I would know how to um, embed that in here, but I, I don't. So I'm going to do exactly what I would do if I were in a regular classroom. I would draw it on the board. So if this is the line, so let's, I'm going to plot what, well, let's use blue for this, x of t. So this is x of t, this is t. Then this function actually looks, it, it looks parabola-like, but then it approaches this line asymptotically. And that makes sense because as, as time goes to infinity, um, the concentration in, in the tank is going to approach the concentration of the water coming in, two ounces per gallon. And, and so the amount of salt is going to approach um, f four ounces per minute. Where, as if you, if you, instead, if you plot the, this should be T, so here, if, if you instead plot the concentration, C of T, this is a little easier to see what it looks like, because it's, again, asymptotically going to approach 2, and that it does, so it, if this is 2, oh, I forgot to switch colors, that's okay, and then the concentration, it goes up a little bit, and then it tapers off and approaches 2 like that. Okay, so let's finish with an example using two tanks, as promised in the beginning. So now we have tank A and tank B. So let me, let me draw a picture of this. So tank A contains 100 gallons um, of, of liquid and 20 ounces of salt. Tank B is bigger. It contains four, uh, 200 gallons. 
So I gotta think how I want to arrange this. So, so here we have 100 gallons. Here we have 200 gallons. Fresh water enters tank A at five gallons per minute. So five gallons per minute comes in. Um, tank A drains into tank B at five gallons per minute. And then finally, tank B, uh, I guess I'll just have to trust that's minute. Yeah, there we go. And then tank B drains at five gallons per minute. And then we have some initial conditions. We have tank A contains 20 ounces of dissolved salt. So let's, so let's say that um, X of 0 equals 20. And tank B contains 40 ounces of dissolved salt. So let's say that, make that an initial condition, Y of 0 equals 40. So I've actually already written down what X and Y are at, or I should, so well, let's write down this. X of T, let's say, is the amount of salt, the number of ounces of salt in tank in tank A, and let Y of T be the amount of salt in tank B. Okay, and so initially we have X of 0 is 20, and Y of 0 is 40. Okay, so as before, we want to do our, our rate in minus rate out thing, but we have to do it for separate tanks. So for tank A, Oh, let's switch back to a pencil. So for tank A, X prime equals rate, rate in minus rate out. Of course, that's the rate in tank A and the rate out of tank A. And let, me, let me add to my, my picture that this, this is fresh water, water coming in. Okay, so, so the Fresh water means that the concentration is, is zero. So we have actually, so we have no, oh, let's, so we have, um, so we have zero salt coming in. And then how much salt do we have coming out? We always want to do volume rate. So that's five gallons per minute times the concentration in the tank, which is always X of T ounces over how many gallons? Well, now we have constant. And so rate in, the volume rate in is the volume rate out for both of these tanks. So we have 100 gallons coming out as before, the gallons will cancel. And this will leave us with what is, um, let's make sure that this, this looks like a five, parentheses, not a 15, as I almost fell for that. So this is negative, let's see, what is it? Um, it is negative 120 X. So the same thing for tank B. So Y prime equals rate in. Ah, rate, that's not very good. Rate in, there we go. Minus rate out. Of course, I'm not writing it, but I'm implying of tank B. Uh, you know, I should probably say that this this is tank. I should probably say that this is tank A and this is tank B. I think it's clear, but just to be safe, rate in. Um, actually, let me let me move down here. I think I'll have more more room. So, okay, so what is rate in? So rate in in tank B is the same as rate out of tank A, right? So this is. That makes sense, correct? Um, 
the amount of salt that's coming out of tank A is exactly the amount that's coming in tank B. So, um, do we want to... Oh, yeah, I'll write it out, sure. Is 5 gallons per minute times X of T ounces per 100 gallons minus the rate out. Now the rate out is 5 gallons per minute is coming out. So let's write that down. So that's 5 gallons per minute is coming out. And the concentration is the amount of salt in here, that's y of t, divided by the volume, which is 200. So times y of t ounces of salt in, in tank B divided by the volume, which is 200 gallons. And so as before, the gallons cancel gallons cancel here. So this first term, again this is the same as this with a different sign, so that's positive 120 x. And this second term, what is this? This is going to be 5 over 20 is 1 40th, so that's going to be 1 40th y. Okay, so to summarize, we have two equations. We have an, equation, an ODE in X, and we have an ODE in Y, although that also involves X. So in other words, we have X prime equals negative 1 20th X, and we have Y prime equals positive 1 20th X minus one fortieth y. So here's what we have. We have two, we have a system of differential equations. Oh, and let's not forget these initial conditions. So solving a system of differential equations, that's going to be the topic of a later section, actually section four, um, because in general it's something that we don't have the tools how to solve. Except this one is actually simpler. This is something we can solve. Let's think about, before we do it, let's think about how we will approach that. Well, let's, so this first equation, we can just solve for x directly, right? x, x of t is, is a, an exponential function, e to the negative 1 20th t. So we can take that function, plug it into here, and then we have a differential equation in y which we can solve using like integrating factor method. So th this is something we can do, and the reason is because we can solve for one of these alone. We can solve for this explicitly first. If there were a y in here, if this were like plus y, we would be in big trouble, and that's what we will study in section four. Okay, so let's finish by solving this system. So I have to remember what it is now. I think a I do. So we had x, oh let me let me use the black pen. So we had x prime equals negative 1 20th x and we have y prime equal positive 1 20th x minus 1 40th y. And we also had that x of 0 equals 20 and y of 0 equals 40. So here's a system that we want to solve. So first thing we'll do is this first equation we we know how to solve. x of t equals c e to the minus 1 20th t. And in fact, not only do we know that it's going to be that this is the general solution, but we know because this is our initial condition, we know that C is going to be 20. So I'm going to write this as 
make our C into a, a 20. Now we can plug this in to the second equation, end it right here, and I'm going to write the second equation as y prime minus or equals 1 20th times 20 e to the minus 1 20th t minus 1 40th y and that's going to simplify as e to the minus 1 20th t minus 1 40th y. Okay? So let's write this in standard form. Let's write this as y prime plus 1 40th y equals e to the minus 1 20th t. Let's use the integrating factor, uh, the integrating factor method this time, although I'm sure either one's going to work there. Or let's, there's our, well, actually I said include the sign, which it doesn't matter here, but it's easy to make a mistake if that's a negative sign. So our, our integrating factor is going to be e to the 1 40th t, right? So let's multiply that by both sides. So when we multiply it on the left-hand side, we do the product rule in reverse, and we get y times e to the 1 40th t prime. And the right-hand side, we get e to the minus 1 20th t times e to the 1 40th t. Exponents add, so this product is e, ooh, we've got to be careful with this, e, minus 120 plus 140, that's, I think that's minus 1 40th t. Correct? Yeah. So now we're going to integrate both sides. Well, we can, I guess I don't need to put an integral there. I'm just going to pay attention to these, the first and the third one. Uh, when we do that, the left-hand side becomes y e to the 1 40th t, because recall that the integral and the derivative cancel. And then the right-hand side becomes, ooh, let's be careful with this one, um, e to the minus 1 40th t divided by negative 1 40th plus c, and that's going to simplify to negative 40 e to the minus 1 40 t plus c. C. Okay, so we have, we have this, and we have this, and we need to solve for this, for y. So let's divide through by e to the 1 40th t, or, which is the same thing as multiply. I find it easier to multiply through by e to the negative 1 40th. I shall put the t on top. There we go. If we do that, then that is going to cancel with that. And so we get that y equals, oh, well, let's see, what, what do we get? So um, so this exponent is add. So this times this is going to be e to the negative 1 20th t. And, but don't forget that this thing is going to stick on to this as well. So we're going to get e to the negative 40, e to the negative 120 t plus c e to the negative t over 40. Okay, this is our general solution. Careful to circle it. 
And the only thing we have not used now is our initial condition, our last initial condition, y of 0 equals 40. So let's, how do I want to organize this? Let's do this. Let's say let's use the last IC. So y of 0, let's plug in 0, and oh, well, this should be y of t, of course. So plugging in 0, well, what happens? This becomes 1. So we have negative 40. And this becomes 1. That becomes c. So negative 40 plus c. And that we have to set that equal to positive 40. To positive 40. And so we get that c equals 80. So now we have our final solution, y of t equals negative 40 e to the minus 1 20th t plus 80 e to the minus 1 40th times t. And so that is our particular solution. So this, let's, let me box this in red. This is our final solution for y. And recall we had our final particular solution for x. Now, it's not clear what these things should look like. Let me, I'm running out of room. I, I can squeeze it in here. We can plot the concentration, or actually, I should say the amount. I did this in Wolfram Alpha on the side. So if you plot the, you know, let me, let me actually circle this in blue. I'm going to use blue for this. Yeah, so that's going to be blue. So, so you should know what this looks like. This is exponential to k, and it's going to approach 0. So this curve is going to look like that, approaching 0. And this, now this one, it's not clear at all what this is going to look like, but it is clear that it will approach zero. Because as time goes to infinity, this goes to zero and that goes to zero. Um, so this here is x of t. It turns out what happens is that this does something sort of like this. This is y of t. So both, this starts at 40, this starts at 20, both of them go to zero, a little different ways. And, and that makes sense, because if fresh water is coming in these tanks, all the salt that starts in initially 20 ounces in here and 40 ounces in here will, will eventually get flushed out, and the concentrations will, in the long run, approach zero.